Good morning, everyone. It's always place to cross on first. There's a reason why I say that. You know, when you start growing in Christ, people, most people think you're going to give your life to Jesus one day and everything's just going to get smooth after that. No, you might well get ready. It has started something, a process in your life that's going to be life long. It's not just you're going to wake up to, in the morning and figure you get it right. To me, this is what I figure. If you got it right, it's time to go to sleep. Because God ain't going to tarnish you too much. Because this world will do that. If you figure you got it right, you ever watch certain people on their deathbed? They're like, I'm ready to go home. To me, that's when you got it right. When you finally there and you're like, you know what? I'm done. I done did all I can do in this world. It's time to go. If you feel like you still got things to do, guess what? God still got something for you to do. And it's going to take some time according to your purpose that he has. The purpose he has for you is different for everybody. Some people, their time might be over at 45. I'm talking about this, my birthday coming up and I'll be 42 in two days. You know what I'm saying? But I'm still here, glory be to God. So I must still got something to do for him. And that means if I'm still walking in this world, still able to breathe, eat, sleep, drink, guess what? It's still gonna be an enemy out there, but guess what, it's still a God. That's why you gotta stay with God first in your life, don't matter what. You know, for these past 13 years or however long I've been doing this, um, man, there's so many times people try to tell me to stop or this and that. You know, somebody posted yesterday on a on a video I posted because I was smoking. It was like, uh, I come back to you when you holy, when you sanctified, when you've been filled with the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something, people. You I, you need to figure out what that means. It's not about what you do. It's who you speak on, how you treat people, and things of so that's the Holy Ghost. Oh, you think it's supposed to be appearance? You think it's supposed to be something that it ain't. It is, you, know, you better read again what sanctification is all about. You better read again what holiness is all about. You see, if you don't know what you're talking about, if you're going to say something, if you're going to say something to me or to any other child of God, if you don't know what you're talking about, they're going to put you in your place. It's not that they're going to put you in your place. God's going to put you in your place. I don't like putting people in their place. I don't. If you got a legitimate argument, say it. But if you're going to say something, explain it. Explain what it is to be holy. Explain what it is to be sanctified. Explain what it is to be saved. Because if it's got something to do with something I got to do, but like far as eating a certain type of food or not eating a certain food to be holy, you are wrong. But anyway, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Something dropped in my head, head while I was saying that prayer. And I'm going to say it. Jesus, a man, a rich man, wealthy man, well-off man, came to Jesus, asked him, how can I be, be, be a holy or be uh, a good person or whatever and be saved? He said, how readest thou? That's the first thing he asked him. How readest thou? He said, well, I know all these things since my youth. All right. So you know, you got to know the word to be holy. What else? He said, go sell all you have and give to the poor. He went away crying. How you treat people. Okay. Jesus said it. I didn't say it. All right, then. How do you treat people? You too busy running around like this. You ain't holy, you ain't holy, you ain't holy. You might figure out you ain't neither. Let's read Jeremiah 27, verse 6. Now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. And the beast of the field have I given him also to serve him. Take Nebuchadnezzar, worship other gods. Worships himself, rich, this and that. But often through the Bible, you ain't got to take my word for it. He called Nebuchadnezzar his servant. He wasn't right yet. But he's going to get there. Same with many of you. You understand? Let's go to Daniel chapter 5. Let's read what that read, Daniel. Let's see when finally... Nebuchadnezzar is humble. Hope you got time. Daniel chapter 5. 
Belshazzar the king made a great feast to ten thousands of no chapter four. My bad. Nebuchadnezzar the king into all people, nations, and language, languages, and dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the, the signs and wonders that the high God have wrought toward me. How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. Nebuchadnezzar, he finna tell you what humbled him. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar was at rest in my house and flourished in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore made I decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me that they might make known to me the interpretation of the dream. Then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And I told the dream before them, but they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But at last day it came in before me, whose name was Belshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And before him I told the dream, saying, Help, O Belshazzar, master of the magicians. Even though he wasn't a master of the magicians, but Nebuchadnezzar's understanding wasn't understanding just yet. <laughs> because I know that the, the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. Uh, now remember what he can't keep saying he keeps saying the holy gods so he's not there yet and no secret of trouble is there tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen and the interpretation thereof thus were the visions of my head and my being I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth and the height thereof was great the tree grew and was strong and the height thereof reached unto heaven and the sight thereof of the end of the earth the leaves thereof were fair and the fruit thereof much and then it was meat for all the beast of the field had shadow under it and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the bowls thereof and all flesh was fed of it. Now think about us being trees. Just think about that. I saw the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and a holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, hew, hew down the tree and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit. Let the beast get away from under it and the fowls from branches. Why? Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field and let it be wet with dew of heaven and let its portion be with the beast in the grass of the earth let the heart be changed from man's and let a beast's heart be given unto him and let seven times pass over him this matters by the decree of the watchers you know the, about the old school the old test they say watchers are angels and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruler in the kingdom of men hmm What's sanctification? And give it to whomsoever he will and set it up over it the beast, the basis, basis of men. What he said? Give it to whomsoever he will and set it up over it the basis of men. Oh, the perfect man, the basis of men, whoever he want. This dream my king Nebuchadnezzar have seen. Now though O Belters are declared the interpretation thereof for his much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but thou art able, for the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was a stone for one hour, and his thought troubled him. The king spake and said, Now let me give you a little backstory about Nebuchadnezzar. He loved Daniel. He loved his God, but he didn't love him with a pure heart all the way. You understand? When he threw Daniel to the lions, it grieved him. It grieved him. He was he ran to Daniel. Hey man, you okay? Yeah, I'm okay, man. God got me. <laughs> What's sanctification? Knowing God got you. Knowing God dwells in you. Talking about the Lord. Praising the Lord. And word. And spirit. And truth. <laughs> Do you understand? Then Daniel, whose name was was a stone for one hour when this thoughts troubled him. Then the king spake and said, Brothers, let not the dream or interpretation thereof trouble thee. Brothers, I answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee, and interpretation thereof to thine enemies. The tree that saw thou sowest, which grew, was strong, whose height reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to all earth, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and it was meat for all, under which the beasts of the, the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king, that are grown and become strong. For thy greatness is grown and reacheth unto heaven and thy dominion to the end of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with dew of heaven. And let his portion be with the beast of the field till seven times pass over him. Seven times may be seven seasons. 
This is the interpretation, O king. And this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord, the king. That they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. And they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven. And seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and give it to whomsoever he will. Whomever he will. Pay attention. And whereas they commanded the, to leave the stump of the tree roots, the kingdom shall be sure unto thee, after that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness. What did he say? How you break off your sins? How you show you are sanctified? Here you go. By righteousness. How you treat people. How you act. How you walk. How you talk. How you behave yourself. And then iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Showing mercy to the poor. Hmm. Not you. Some of y'all out there. Y'all always got something to say. Because you're holy. You're right. It may be a lengthening of the tranquility. It, if it may be a lengthening of uh, thy tranquility. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake. Let's see what he said. Let's accept your righteousness to exceed the righteousness of the scribe of Pharisees. You will not inherit the kingdom of God. Nebuchadnezzar is more like them. The king spake and said, Is not this great beloved land that I have built for the house of thy kingdom by the might of my power? And for the honor of my majesty. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee they spoke, and the kingdom is departed from thee. Pride. And it shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. And seven times shall pass over thee until thou know the most high ruler in the kingdom of men, and give it to whomsoever he will. You see, the God gives the word of God to whomever he wants. Not who you think is qualified. Not who I think is qualified. Whom the Lord loves, he chastises. Whom the Lord loves, he justifies. Hey, you justify through what? Your praise and worship to him. Your, how you treat the poor. How you love your neighbor as yourself. Judgment? Hmm. Some of y'all are going to go to hell because of unrighteousness, unrighteous judgment. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men and did eat grass and oxen. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hairs were grown like eagles' feathers and his nails like birds' claws. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes into heaven and my understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High God. And I praised and honored him. That liver forever. How do you showcase righteousness and faith in the Lord? Hmm. How do you showcase holiness and sanctification? And his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the heavens of the earth are reputed as nothing. He doeth according to his will in the armor of heaven and among the heavens of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? At the same time, I receive reason returning to me. And for the glory of my kingdom, my honor, and my brightness returned unto me. And my counselors and my Lord sought unto me. And I was established in my kingdom. And ecstasy, majesty was added unto me. Now I never can as a praise and extol and honor the king of heaven. He went from plural to singular. All whose works are truth. And his ways, judgment. And those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. My servant Nebuchadnezzar, the perfect man. <laughs> yeah. But people, I don't do this for nothing. I give praise and honor to God because he is God and he's worthy to be praised. I don't care if I got a smoke or a cigarette in my hand. I don't care what I got going on. All glory and honor goes to God. I'm not trying to be God. Now, if you're looking at me trying to see God... You might see a portion. You might see a, a little way of why I walk and talk and act, but there's only one God, and we are not them. Oh, are you one of those people that say you are gods, but you shall die like men? That's what God said. 
You think you done. Then he's talking about the poor and that thing right there. You see people, stop looking at the world through a, a manly perspective or a womanly perspective. I asked the question to somebody, but I posed the question first. Because that's what they said. They said, I'm not going to listen to you because you got a cigarette in your mouth. I was like, whoa, boy, I've been talking about that. And it's crazy that somebody came to me and said the exact same thing. I'm not going to listen to you because of that. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. I guess you just don't want to hear the word of God. You understand? I'm just being real. You understand? Anybody that loves God, they're going to talk about it. You must be the devil because you want me to stop talking about the most high God. You might work for him. I'm just being real with you. <laughs> you might got it all wrong. I bet you're telling a lot of people around, hey, don't get away from me with that cancel stick talking about God. All right, then. You just don't want to hear about him. The devil don't want to hear about God. Mm -hmm. He don't. He don't even want you to extol him. He don't want you to praise the most high God. He wants you to forget about him, just like this person trying to get me to forget about praising the Lord. But look at Nebuchadnezzar. Did so many things. Slew so many Israelites. For, for God. Did things that most people would deem unacceptable. But he was always considered God's servant. David, a man after God's own heart, was never perfect. Had flaws. Committed fornication. Number the children of Israel when the God told him not to do it. Don't tell him what else he did, because I'm sure all the his sins are not written in the book of God. But just a little bit, just to show you that people are not perfect. Abraham slept with somebody other than his wife to have another child. Wow. I'm so tired of people beating people up over everything. Uh, Noah was drunk, but you know what he said? He believed God and he trusted God. Sanctification is belief in God, trusting in God. Studying his word. Treating people how they're supposed to be treated. It's all about actions. Not about ingestion. Not about what you smoke or whatever. Who you reverence. I know a lot of people are like, well, that cigarette is your idol. Well, you eat every day. I guess food's your idol too. You understand what I'm saying? Now, the Bible is a book of self-control. Know how to control oneself. Most people that think self-control is, well, I don't have to do nothing. No, that's self-control. Self-control is, let's say if you got self-control over sex. Let's explain that. What's self-control over sex? As they say, a married man. Now, there are two types of self-control for sex. They say if you are a single man, self-control of sex is, I don't need to have sex because I'm single and I love the Lord. So I flee fornication. I don't, that's self-control for a single man. And a lot of times I have lacked that. But self-control for a married man is, you can have sex, but you ain't given to sex. You don't have to have it to survive. I don't have to have cigarettes to survive. I don't even have to have food for 40 days, according to the, the Bible. You know what I'm saying? I can, I can go without food and all this and that. You understand? But self-control is being able to control oneself and still be holy in regards to how the Bible translates being holy. He said, be holy in all matter of conversation. Okay, then I guess I'm not holy if I'm talking about God with a cigarette in my mouth. But who am I talking about? Wisdom will be known, will be made known. If you love God, you're going to talk about your God. It don't matter what state you're in. Why can't people get this? A lot of people ain't receiving a grafted word that's able to save their souls because they're too busy looking at what they think. Nebuchadnezzar, my servant. I bet a lot of y'all still think Nebuchadnezzar was evil. No, he just had sin for no reason. Just like you. Just like me. You understand? He said to the defiled and unbelieving, everything is evil. I guess you sound like one of them people. But I guess you didn't watch the video all the way through because you just saw a cigarette and said, I ain't listening to him. <laughs> for real. Let me, let me get a fancy suit and a gold watch on. I guess you got to know me by my fruits. You got to know me by how I look. And as long as I look like a Pharisee, you'll listen to me. Or you'll listen to Jesus. You might not even like Jesus because Jesus drunk wine too. I guess, you know, Jesus was drinking the devil's drink too. Do you even truly believe in Jesus? I don't think you do. 
And Jesus was perfect. Perfect. And drunk wine. Well, wine is different for cigarettes. All right. Whatever you say. I'm going to go with you on this one. I'm going to agree with your adversary quickly. But I'm going to hit you with the truth at the same time. Let me pause and I will continue.